Hello everybody and welcome to Facebook Live here on this beautiful Easter day. Um, if you're inside, it's beautiful. In fact, actually it's just uh, a little blustery for April in my opinion, but we're thankful we've got, uh, we've got a house to come into. Welcome to the office here at the ranch. Uh, we're going to dig into some pretty cool stuff. Matter of fact, I got the vaccine. I've got it. I've got the vaccine. That's right. This is the one everybody's been waiting for. This is, uh, oh, it's not the Corona. No, 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 no. It's not the Corona vaccine. No, no. This vaccine is um, to make sure that we practice Easter every day. I mean, why is it such a big deal once a, uh, once a year? I, I realize it's our, our annual celebration, but the vaccine that we're going to talk about today can be applied to everyday living, living every day like it's Easter, and it's going to be simple. Matter of fact, we're going to talk a lot about why we, you know, a lot of us, we, we go to Easter, and we, we come out of a church service, we're fired up, we're ready to go, and then, you know, it'll last, you know, we stay where we want to be for maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, maybe a half a day or something after the fact. Um, why, can't we, why can't we hold on to our spiritual commitments longer? That's what this vaccine's about. That's what this is about. We're going to learn how to do it daily. Now, walk in a daily the, the problem. If you have an addiction and you've been through the process, you know the first step is to admit that you have a problem. All right? Hey, by the way, this is off subject, but if you are fighting an addiction, this book right here is a must, okay? This is called Staying Sober. Get that. You can get them for like $3, a used version, okay, on uh, Amazon. That's not what we're talking about today. But what we are talking about is that the church, Christianity, we have a problem. Number one, we have got to admit there is a problem. You see, I'm going to pick on men a little bit. So if you're a woman and, and your man isn't going to church, uh, call your pastor right now, okay? Call your pastor right now. Say, get on this video. And uh, if you're a man and you want to go to church and you go on Easter and you go on Christmas and you go on special occasion, but you just can't make yourself go, call your pastor. Call somebody. Um uh, Call a friend. Don't leave this video. It's so easy. It's crazy how we miss this, okay? I've got the vaccine. I'm telling you, it's easy. It's not like taking something that's nasty. This is good. You're going to love it. We've got the answers right here today. It's going to change America. If you know a pastor, call them right now. Because we have a problem in America. We can't stick to it. We're going to identify it today. In the next few minutes, we're going to also give you a solution that anybody can follow. It's so easy. So we got a problem. The problem is, as I, as I said, I'm going to pick on men a little bit. And you can go to Barna Research Group. They study, they, they, they survey, and they study in and who's out in Christian churches in America. Less than one-third any congregation, nearly any congregation, but all, overall, less than one-third of the men are in church. Less than one third of the men are in church. Matter of fact, a lot of times we've seen the same old story. We've seen a, a young mom with the two kids and they're dressed up and they go to church every week and the mom, she, she does good and everything. She's got a ring on her hand, but the guy who bought her the ring is noticeably absent. Hmm. That is a problem, isn't it? And then you look at the church today and you take out uh, the preachers and the song leader, and how many men are really engaged? Maybe 10%. Maybe 10%. Maybe we ought to turn off our ringer before we get started here. All right. We've got a problem. Now, I'm not saying the men need to run the church. I mean, that ought to be a 50-50 deal. Men and women are working together, and women should be in leadership just as much as men. But, I mean, the men are absent. So, what is the problem? i tell you what. i got a book. Look at this. Why men hate going to church. Look at that guy. He's snoring. Maybe the way we do church is a problem. You know, as we had this opportunity to slow down, 
been thinking a lot about church, and I think maybe the church, all Catholics, Protestants, we're missing the boat. We're missing the boat. There's a reason men aren't going to church. There's a, there's a reason that, that numbers are dropping and our kids are not engaged in church. There's a reason for that. I won't pick on men because I can relate to this. And here's the deal. Here's the reality. We get a guy that goes to an Easter Sunday and he's like, all right, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this deal. I'm going to do it for the family's sake. I'm going to do it because I know it's the right thing to do. All right, this time I'm going to give it a go. Maybe he even walks the aisle and he says, I want, to, I want to ask Jesus to become the Lord and Savior. There were thousands of people that did that today. By the way, thank God for the churches and, and all the commitments that were made today on this Easter day. All right? But today, if you just joined us, we're talking about how to make it Easter every day. And it's going to be easy. we got the vaccine here. But you got a guy that makes a commitment and then he goes back after hearing the gospel, the good news. You're forgiven. Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. He took your sins so you could have a relationship with God. Actually, the major message is Jesus died so you could go to heaven. But this guy's trying to figure out how to get through this week. I mean, we got people that have lost jobs right now. Lots of you have lost your jobs. We don't know what we're going to do. We don't know where this world is headed. We're confused. Yeah, uh, heaven is great, but I need to get through today, this week. We got the antidote for that too. But we got this guy that's committed. He wants to do right. And the next week, he comes back and he says, Pastor, <laughs> I didn't really change that much. Matter of fact, I went back into some of my old issues and addictions and and you know what most pastors in America say, and this could be the problem, what you just need to clean up. You know, what, what you all need to do, you know, you just need to get away from those friends, you need to get away from those issues, and you need to come here in church more often. You need to get involved and get in church. You need to set up straight and, and you need you know dress up and come in here and, and listen and learn and and quit drinking and, and carousing and fighting. As a matter of fact, you gotta be nice. You gotta get along. And man go, okay, I will, but that don't last very long because man, men have a hard time sitting still in a lecture. We're doing church like school. Most of us young guys grew up in school going, oh, oh, oh man, I can't wait to get outside. We look out the window all the time. I can't we're not wait to go fishing and hunting. That's what men are doing. That's what guys are doing. They're snoring. Maybe it's not the effective way. You remember when, when we went from grade school and we finished eighth grade and then we got to go to Boag and we were working, we were actively learning every day and we still remember those skills? Maybe lecture isn't the most effective way for them to learn, especially if it lasts more than about 20 minutes. Maybe we have a problem. Maybe the way we teach in America is wrong, for men especially. Maybe the church looks a lot like it's very comfortable. You see, men, are, men don't like comfort. We, we like adventure. Old pe people and women, they love something that's very predictable and very comfortable. And that's what we have in the church today. I'm sorry, but I want Easter every day, and I'm, I know I'm hitting somebody in the nose and they don't like it. But that's just the way it is. We have got to admit a problem. I've got a, I've got a vaccine that's going to fix this if you'd stay with me. Because we tell them to clean up and act nice, and guys just can't do it. Not the way we're teaching them. We tell them to stay away from sin. I remember playing basketball, and the coach says, hey, you've got four fouls. Whatever you do, don't foul. <laughs> All right. You go out on the court and guess what you're thinking about? Fouling the whole time. You can't function the way you're supposed to play because all you're thinking about is not fouling. That's all we've done. Go and don't sin. We've got people, and I know this because it's happened to me. We commit, we try hard, we fail. We commit, they say, well, just commit and try harder. And that's what we do. And we fail. And it's because we fail every day. 
We're going to fail every day. That's why we need God's grace. I need God's grace and his mercy every day. The antidote's coming. I'm telling you, i got an answer to this. It could change America if America will listen to me right now. Pastors, do not turn this off. Listen to me. It doesn't work just by commitment and trying hard. I'm in a rodeo business. That's how you ride bulls. You commit and you try hard. That, that ain't how you live out the life God intended for you to, to live. Because we walk around in a fallen body. This old body is, is not purified. Our spirit has been purified if we believe that God sent Jesus to take our sins. That's, in, that's what's been purified. We're still going to walk around in our old nature because our mind is still knows where we've been and likes some of it. So we give up. Men and women both. We, we commit, we try hard, we fail, we feel bad, and then we give up. And then condemnation sets in. But here's the good news. Not, not the biggest good news yet. Condemnation is the number one tool the enemy ever came up with because everybody I deal with, and just nearly every person I've dealt with, they want to try hard, they want to commit, and they do, but they fall off because they fail. And condemnation eats them up. But John 3, 17, now we know John 3, 16 very well, but John 3, 17 says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are you ready for the vaccine? It's in Matthew 6.33. It's simple. It's, it, it's, it is so simple. I cannot believe this has not been taught. And while you're, if you're turning to that right now, I want to say thank you to Sadie Robertson. Tim Tebow, my daughter, pulled Sadie Robertson up on, on Facebook today, and her message was spectacular. And that's where I kind of got this vaccine idea because she was talking about the vaccine. And the vaccine is Jesus. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's what she said. And I agree, but I'm going to take a step further because I'm going to show you how to apply that where any man, woman, or child can apply the vaccine. All right? Here it is. Matthew 6.33. Talking about all the problems of this world. You, you read before that, you'll find it looks very similar to the worry and fear that's going on in our world right now. But when you get to the 33rd verse of Matthew 6, guess what it says? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will take care of themselves. Don't worry about tomorrow. That's a story of its own. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Now, I, I, I've, uh, I've got a lot of books back here about the kingdom. I've, had, I've listened to a lot of sermons about the kingdom, but how do you really apply the kingdom? And I was talking to some buddies of mine that have helped me spiritually. And I said, hey, I really want to break down. Seek first the kingdom. What does that mean? And I've got answers, but here's what God showed me yesterday afternoon. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. You see, the kingdom is where the king is. And unfortunately, we have been taught, one of two or both, that the king lives in heaven. And he does, but that's not all, because the king is here. Jesus brought heaven down after the resurrection. Jesus brought authority down to earth when he was resurrected. That's the good news. That's not all of it yet. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. The king is here. He's not in your church building. <laughs> the king is not in your church building. And I think a lot of us are finding this out here as we have been focused on being at home that seek first the kingdom is where the king lives see the bible says that when we accept him we become unified as one and that we are the church this is the temple seek first that god lives in you seek the kingdom the where the king lives it's in me the king lives in me he transformed and purified and justified my spirit, my spirit man that he breathed into me. He woke it up and made it alive, gave me a brand new heart, it says. Seek where the king lives. Dwell on that. What if we dwell every day on, Lord, thank you that you live in me and that, that it's not all about just getting to heaven and that I'll see you one day. Thank you, Lord, that you're alive in me. Thank you, Lord. 
Uh, Romans 4, 7, 8 says, Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Here's the thing. When, let me, let me, let's go to uh, Romans 6, 10. Talking about how you've been buried with Christ and risen, resurrected. Your spirit has been resurrected with him. But if you look at Romans 6, 10, it says, he became the sacrifice once and for all. One time for all. One time for all. Seek ye first the kingdom, where the king lives. I'm worthy. I've been forgiven. He can live in me. Not just when I'm doing good, not when I'm just going to church, not just on Sunday, not just on Easter. He lives in me all the time because Jesus died once and for all. Now go back to Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek his righteousness, the purification, the justification, purify, justify, sanctify. If I got up every day and said, Lord, I thank you that I'm purified and justified. I'm made good enough because of the resurrection for what Jesus did for God himself through his Holy Spirit to live in me. If I start out every day going, God, I got you with me. No matter what happens to my body and circumstances, I know you'll give me peace or strength or wisdom. I know you're going to carry that through. I know you're going to carry me through. But in my spirit, I'm going to have peace. What if we did that every day instead of begging God for forgiveness that we already been given? You see, the church to heap condemnation way back in the early centuries of the church so they could control the political climate at that time. They heaped condemnation on people saying, you've got to come to the church to get forgiveness. That is not in the Bible. How about we get up every day and say, Lord, thank you that I'm forgiven. You know, they taught us that before we received salvation. You know, Jesus has died for your sins. But then after salvation, they say, hey, you've got to keep, you got to keep, you, you guys need to keep coming to church, clean up, and keep asking forgiveness. Seek ye first the kingdom. Righteousness is forever. You know, when this became very real with me, I read a study that said that we, our brain calculates a thought every second. And I thought, wow, I wonder how many of my thoughts per minute are selfish. What am I going to do? What am I going to eat? Where am I going to go? What am I? What am I? What am I? What am I? <laughs> um, about 100%. 90-something. So what's the root of all sin? Selfishness. I'm selfish every second because of every thought. Is usually about me? Yeah. You think I can remember all the selfishness every day to ask for it? No. It's ridiculous. People say, what about nine? You've got to confess your sins to receive salvation. That was written to unbelievers. They were Gnostics that thought they were perfect. They did not admit that they sinned. And he said, no, you, you've got to confess that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. <laughs> By the way, that's the only verse that muddies this water about righteousness because Matthew 6.33 is the antidote. Here it is. This is the vaccine that keeps us on Easter every day. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Dwell on his righteousness that he gave you. Dwell in his righteousness. Now, once again, if you haven't heard, if you haven't seen me study, we'll move the camera right now. We'll move the camera right now over here. He hasn't made your body perfect. He hasn't made your soulish, emotional guy that's going to keep on messing up perfect. But he's made the spirit of God who lives in you because of what Jesus did. He made your spirit perfect. God is not surprised. He's not shocked. He's not caught off guard because of whatever type of sin that you are dealing with. Doesn't surprise him. I tell you what will surprise all of you if you get up every day and seek ye first the kingdom where God lives. God lives in me, the church, and my righteousness and with a thankful heart. Thankfulness changes everything. Thank you, Lord, that I'm forgiven. Lord, thank you. You gave me your righteousness and you took my sins away. Thank you that I can walk in this today. A lot of you are going, yeah, 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 but you're just telling people they can go do whatever they want. No. 
There's consequences for being stupid. If you sin, you're going to hell on earth. I had a guy come up to me and go, who was at a rodeo, and he said, uh, man, this, this grace, this total forgiveness thing is making a lot of sense, but I, I just can't quite get a hold of it. He said, because you're telling me that you could cheat on your wife and still go to heaven. And I said, yes. And he's like, <laughs> I said, one of these days, I'll go to heaven. God's never going to leave me. Now, I'll go to hell right here because guess what? I'll lose the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I will never see my grandchildren because my daughter will never speak to me again. Why would I want to be stupid? Why? Why do we want to be stupid when I got him right here? When I, get up, when I got up today and I said, Lord, I'm going to seek your kingdom. This is where you live. And I'm going to be thankful for my righteousness. Guess what? Grace tells us when we walk in this, it's in Titus, grace tells us to walk away from sin. It's, I've told you before that the whole key to understanding life is which one of these guys is talking to me? Is it my body? Is it my soulish emotion? Or is it the spirit of God? And if you define who's speaking to you, you're going to walk away and around most of all the problems that life throws at you. God never leaves you. You are a new creation. Don't anybody tell you any different. But don't be stupid. Because you're not going to get, you're not going to have the life God intended for you to have. You're not going to have the job. You're not going to have the house, the spouse. You're going to miss out on a lot of cool stuff. But being stupid, you kids, don't be stupid. There's consequences. There's terrible consequences. God wants good out, out of this life for you. I'm going to finish up with this right here. Romans 5, 1 and 2. We've been justified through faith. We have peace with the church. You know, we, we have peace if we ask forgiveness, the church says. No, I have peace no matter what. When I fall and I mess up, I know I have peace with God, and I can talk to him about it. He can help me change. I, before I knew about this, and most men will tell you, I can't speak for the women, we hide from God. We don't pray. We don't open our Bible for days and weeks when we mess up because we're ashamed. We're ate up with consequences. But when I believe that no matter what, he's with me, I go right back to him just as soon as I mess up. Go, oh, man. And, and it's okay. I mean, I'm not saying don't confess your sins to God. It's good to get that off of you. you get that off and out of you. There's nothing wrong with that. It is healthy. But you're Spirituality doesn't depend on it. Let me finish this here. We have peace with God, our Lord Jesus, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace that I'm talking about, in which we now stand, and we rejoice in it. Man. Uh, Romans 6.18, by the way, Hebrews and Romans has the answers that I'm talking about. This is confusing. Hey, and if this is confusing, this... This took a friend of mine, and then another friend of mine, and another one, <coughs> three or four years before I started going, oh, oh, wow. And then the Bible started understanding. By the way, thank you, Marty Campbell, Pendleton, Oregon. He called me this week and said, hey, I'm getting it. I've read, I've read uh, Second Peter, and I read it like, he said, I've read it my whole life, many, many, many times. He said, I totally got it. In a whole new way. And that's what will happen if you walk in this. If you'll use the vaccine, seek the kingdom first. Seek ye first the kingdom where the king lives. And seek your righteousness. And you'll understand this book, this New Testament, like you've never understood it before. All right. Uh, where am I? 5, 6, 18, 6, 18, I believe. You've been set free from sin. You have become slaves to righteousness. Make yourself a slave to righteousness and see how that'll change your life. Get up every day and say, thank you, Lord, for making my spirit perfect. Now, the self-righteous people in church are telling you to clean up, set up, and be nice, change everything. They can't stand the fact that people on the bottom of the on the bottom of the morality scale are just as good as them. <laughs> you can't stand it. 
churches and pastors are scared to teach what the book says about forgiveness and total righteousness because they think that people will just walk away from the church. If we seek ye first the kingdom, his righteousness, people will run to fellowship. People will run to learn what's next. Because you're grateful. Because you'll relish in the Easter story every day. You'll get a brand new identity. This is who I am. I'm not that guy that likes sin. You will renew your emotional man. You'll renew your body. You'll have a whole new way of thinking. You know, the church says that faith comes from here. Faith is believing in God and what he says. And they said, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. We've confused the word, which is God's rhema voice inside of me, speaking and leading with the Bible. We need the true word, which is found in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was Jesus. Sadie Robertson was right today when she said, I've got a vaccine, and his name is Jesus. I give you a vaccine today. His name is Jesus, and he made you right if you believe that God sent him, and he did die and was resurrected. He's buried your sin into the sea of forgetfulness. Forgetfulness means he's not going to remember it no more. The vaccine is in Matthew 6, 33, when Jesus said it. Seek first. Why isn't everybody teaching what Jesus said to seek first? Why isn't this the biggest news at every church service every week? Seek ye first the kingdom where the king lives and the righteousness that Jesus gave you through the Easter resurrection story. You will have a whole new world open up for you. Admit we have a problem. Get the vaccine. Seek him first. Follow this page, Justin McKee Inspiration. We continue to tell the good news. The gospel is the good news. And the good news is his grace. See you next time.